Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dehri Bagga and today I will show you one of the interesting games that I played. Now I started off with d4, my opponent responds with d5. I went with bishop g5 with the idea of uh, preventing opponent from playing e6 straight away. Here my opponent plays c6 instead trying to solidify the center pawn. I went with e3 with the same idea. My opponent plays uh, knight f6 now. Of course, I can trade and spoil the opponent pawn structure, but then, then also my opponent would have decent compensation. Uh, in fact, it would have more control now on the e5 square, which I eventually want to control with my knight coming from f3 and then to uh, e5 eventually. I started off with c3 though, making sure that my pawn structure is solid here, uh, creating a pyramid in the center. Uh, my opponent plays a6 preventing a move like a bishop a b5 but that was not required because the opponent had already played a move c6 so i don't know why a6 was played was pretty passive uh, i went with h4 uh, making sure that my bishop is also supported and i'm advancing the pawn as well making sure uh, to capitalize once my opponent castles i will have some attack going on already my opponent plays h5 here which was weakening because Make sure that my bishop stands there on g5, uh, maintaining this uh, pin eventually once the pawn gets moved up. So bishop there would be tough to be removed. And then I went with a bishop on to e2, hitting the pawn here with the idea of capturing the knight, which is the second defender of the pawn apart from the rook. And then I can have an extra pawn. Here my opponent plays a bishop f5, which allows me to do so. So I took on the knight uh, where my opponent takes back with the pawn. And then I get the extra pawn on h5 with my bishop. My opponent takes on my knight uh, with the bishop, hoping that I am what if I by mistake uh, capture it with the queen. And then my opponent can take uh, the bishop and get a heads up in the game. But that didn't happen. I took on with the rook instead, uh, which was the best move as well. And then my opponent played queen a5, trying to hit my pawn. Now, computer is suggesting I can go ahead with my attack with queen on g4 because then I'll have the nice diagonal giving a check to the opponent later on and then maybe I can take a pawn and grab the rook as well. Uh, but that can be risky as well because my opponent will also be doing some activity on my side of the board and then I would have to move my rook again after the pawn is captured. That would weaken up all my pawns as well. So I didn't want to go into that line. So for example, if I go here, um, and my opponent decides to say capture the pawn. Here the best move can be to uh, give a check where after my opponent moves, I have to move my rook now. I cannot um, let my uh, queen take a pawn here. So I have to move my rook. Here my opponent can take the pawn as well. And after now, now I have to be careful. I can't be greedy because if I take, my opponent can take back with the queen and I'm losing the game already. So I have to be careful there and not get extra greedy as well maybe develop the knight and then castle here can be one of the ideas but then if i'm developing the knight okay this rook is also going to come and grab the bishop maybe uh not a bad move at all uh and then i'm yes i'm going to hit the rook with the knight uh which uh, in terms now has to basically play pawn forward because if not if the rook goes back i'm coming in with a check and that could lead to a checkmating at a pattern as well Suppose if the opponent goes back, that's a checkmate already because queen is controlling everything. There was one square, which I now, uh, the king had only one square, which it was standing on. And I covered that with knight coming to f5. So opponent would have then to give the uh, rook there for the knight. And after we exchange stuff, uh, I can castle. Looks like a decent position to play from uh, with queen active uh, there as well. I'll have a couple of rooks. Uh, and some advantage on uh, with the pawn structure on the king side, but still uh, looks like a complex game from there on. Instead, uh, uh, so I didn't went with uh, queen to g4. I went with a3 first, making sure that the queen never comes into my side of the board. After that, my opponent plays a b5, trying to be aggressive on the uh, queen side, and I just saved my bishop backwards, making sure that now I have a bishop controlling this diagonal. If knight is developed, I can take it. And my opponent will have a bad pawn set. Uh, the, the king also gets moved up. Uh, here my opponent plays g6, preparing for maybe f5 next, trying to cut off this diagonal. 
I went with H5, making sure that if now opponent takes, I can again take back. Uh, so here my opponent proceeds with the pawn instead of taking because otherwise I could have captured and exchanged the rooks as well. I'm already in advantage. Uh, sorry, I, what did I do? Okay, I refreshed it by mistake. So my op if I uh, were to take, if my opponent takes here, then that can be problematic. Uh, I cannot take because my rook is not defended yet. So I have to bring back my bishop, play pawn forward so that my rook is defended. And then I only can take this. So my opponent didn't think that and played g5 straight away, making sure uh, that there's no pawn trade happening at all. And after g5, I went with, I went with uh, queen to f3. Yes, it's a typical square for a knight, but here my queen is active and that can be used. Uh, other ideas was to place queen on f5, if not to capture the pawn on f6. Uh, here my opponent gets the queen back in time, making sure that there's no attack coming in, uh, queen gets back uh, onto d8 there. And I develop the knight on e2, making sure that the knight is progressing in the game, adding on to the attack, which is already right. Now knight to d7 by the opponent. Now I cannot, don't want to take here because queen can take back. So instead I went with uh, king d2, connecting both my rooks, so that I am prepared to push the pawn maybe. Uh, and king is pretty much safe in the center. There's no attack happening. Both my rooks are now connected. I can use them in the center file as well if required. So all good there. And now opponent continues attack from the queen side, playing uh, a5 there, trying to break open from here. Uh, and then I went with uh, e4, trying to break open the center because the king is in center. Now, this is not a bad trade for white as well because, yes, the king is in center, but pretty safe. Once my opponent does take here, that would be nasty for my opponent. I can take back with the queen. Uh, so here my opponent went with knight b6, trying to defend the center. I still took it because I wanted to place my queen here and give a check eventually. Uh, and then opponent takes with the knight, uh, the center pawn. I went with knight g3, trying to acquire f5 next. Here my opponent plays uh, b4, trying to break open from the pawn, the pawn structure. I gave a check from the rook now, trying to get all my pieces into attack. This rook on b1 is defending uh, the pawn uh, storm there. And the other rook, which was not being used yet, comes into the attack now, hitting the king with a check. Now bishop comes in between. And then I go with knight f5, pressurizing the bishop further. Here my opponent moves the king on to f8. Uh, and here I could have played pawn forward uh, and kick this knight away from the defenses. Uh, but I thought of capturing the bishop and simplifying the position. Opponent takes back with the knight. Now, I, again, I can take this pawn uh, with the queen, uh, but I took on b4 first, making sure that there's no tension on the uh, king side, uh, queen side. And after opponent takes back, I give the rook as well that we can exchange because I'm pretty much comfortable in the position already. Now, opponent takes on the pawn, I take back, and then opponent takes the rook which we exchange and I'm feeling still confident about my position because uh, of the light square bishop in the game. My rook is on the open file. Queen is already lining up uh, some pieces. Uh, here my open plays uh, king g7 trying to run to safety, defending the pawn as well. I went with rook a6 trying to hit the pawn. Uh, it's now being attacked twice uh, and defended once, at least for now, but I was not really going to take on because uh, I would get, uh, I would lose the rook for a knight and a pawn, which is not a right trade. Here my opponent plays queen d5, asking for queen exchange. And I thought it's a good time because uh, I can trade off and then I can get this extra pawn somehow with my bishop coming back or maybe my rook hitting it. And that would be over. Uh, and that's what happens. I trade the queens, open trade back with the pawn. Now uh, rook to a7, hitting the knight. And after the knight removes from here, all I have to do is place my rook onto a d7, get the pawn. So open tries to save that with the knight here, uh, with the rook, sorry. And then I place my rook onto a d7, hitting the pawn. Open tries to kick my bishop backwards and I go on to f3. Now I have two attackers. Open has one defense. So there's nothing much open can do here. Open plays pawn forward. I take, open takes back with the knight. And now I have extra pawns. And this should be a simple end game from here. Open plays uh, king on to f6. Now a uh, king d3 by me, trying to go towards the center as much as possible. 
Urban gets to see my extra free pawn. And I took a liberty of pushing my c pawn here, c4. Opponent takes, but it doesn't matter because I'll keep pushing my pawn. Opponent tries to take on g and f pawns, and I keep pushing. Opponent does manage to take everything, but then I get my queen on the board, and it's too late already because now you will not be able to promote. Now, queen to c6, giving a check, opponent moves, and then another check from here, and then just falling up. And here my opponent plays rook in between, so of course I can trade, there's no harm. I have extra pawn as well. I take all the pawns eventually. Uh, there's one pawn remaining. I give a check. The opponent tries to hang on to it, but that's too uh, too impossible to hold on to this because after I take, I'll have queen on the board. And that's what happens. And it was a quick checkmate from there on, trying to control the king onto the last rank then. And here my opponent actually resigned. So it was pretty much good. Uh, uh, it was controlled throughout and also I did the computer analysis later on. Uh, yes, I gave the opponent a shot back in the game as per the computer. But if you have seen this game uh, right through, you would have felt that white was pretty much comfortable throughout. So yes, as per the computer, there were some slight disadvantages uh, on my end as well. Like uh, I gave back the game to the opponent. It came back to 1, 1 1.3 as per the computer evaluation. But it was never the uh, the way I felt it, in fact. So I was pretty much in control, and that's completely fine. Uh, I hope you like the video. Do let me know your feedback. Keep watching and sharing. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already by now. And I shall see you tomorrow again with some interesting content. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.